Welcome to an introduction to matrix exponentials, as well as how to determine matrix exponentials for two simple cases. Matrix exponentials provide another way of finding a fundamental matrix solution for a system of differential equations with constant coefficients in the form of x prime equals p times x. If this would be just one equation when p is a number or a one by one matrix, then the solution would be x equals e to the power of pt. This doesn't make sense if p is a larger matrix, but essentially the same computation that led to the above works for matrices when we define e to the power of pt properly. Let us first write down the Taylor series for e to the power of at for some number a. You may recall this series from Calc 2. Recall that k factorial is equal to one times two times three, all the way out to times k, and zero factorial is equal to one. If we differentiate the series term by term, we get the result below. Notice if we factor out a, we do have a times e to the power of at. Similarly, for an n by n matrix, we define the matrix A exponential as e to the power of a equals i plus a plus one half a squared plus one sixth a cubed and so on. If we compare this definition to the definition above for e to the power of at, notice one is replaced with the identity matrix i, the number a is replaced with matrix a, and there is no t. Let us not worry about convergence. The series really does always converge. We usually write p times t as t times p by convention when p is a matrix. With this small change and by the exact same calculation as above, we have that the derivative of e to the power of tp equals p times e to the power of tp. Now p and hence e to the power of tp is an n by n matrix. What we are looking for is a vector. In a one by one case, we would at this point multiply by an arbitrary constant to get the general solution. In this case, we multiply by a column vector c. Looking at the theorem below, if p is an n by n matrix, then the general solution to x prime equals p times x is x equals e to the power of tp times c, where c is an arbitrary constant vector. In fact, x of zero equals the constant vector c. And again here, e to the power of tp is a matrix exponential. And of course, we can check this by differentiating, which is shown below. So again, the important part here is e to the power of tp is a fundamental matrix solution of the homogeneous system. So if we compute the matrix exponential, we have another method for solving constant coefficient homogeneous systems. It also makes it easy to solve for the initial conditions. To solve x prime equals a times x with the initial condition x of zero equals b, the solution is x equals e to the power of ta times vector b. This follows because e to the power of zero a is equal to the identity matrix, and therefore x of zero is equal to the identity matrix times vector b, which does return vector b. Next, we have an important property that we use when determining matrix exponentials. If a and b are matrices, if a times b equals b times a, meaning the matrices commute, then e to the power of a plus b equals e to the power of a times e to the power of b. Otherwise, e to the power of a plus b doesn't equal e to the power of a times e to the power of b in general. And again, this is important when determining matrix exponentials, which we'll see shortly. And now let's take a look at two simple cases on determining matrix exponentials. In some instances, it may work to just plug into the series definition. Suppose the matrix is diagonal. For example, let's consider matrix D, which is the two by two matrix with entries A0, 0B. We know that D to the power of K has entries A to the power of K, 0, 0, and B to the power of K. And now if we apply the definition for E to the power of D, we have E to the power of D equals I plus D plus one half D squared plus one six D cubed and so on. Again, this is using the definition here at the bottom of the screen. And now we replace i with the two by two identity matrix, and we replace d in its powers with the appropriate matrix. From here, if we take a look at the entries in row one, column one, notice the sum is the Taylor series for e to the power of a. Similarly, if we look at the entries in row two, column two, we have the series for e to the power of b, the other two entries remain zero. So now we have e to the power of d, is equal to the two by two identity matrix with entries e to the a, zero, zero, and e to the b. From here it follows that the matrix exponential e to the power of td has entries 
e to the power of at, 0, 0, and e to the power of bt. Notice how determining a matrix exponential for a diagonal matrix is very straightforward. Using this rationale for two by two matrices, e to the power of i has entries e, 0, 0, and e, and e to the power of ai, where a is some constant, is equal to the two by two matrix with entries e to the power of a, 0, 0, and e to the power of a. And of course, this property does apply for larger square diagonal matrices. And now let's look at the second simple case. Now that we know how to easily determine a matrix exponential for a diagonal matrix, this makes exponentials of certain other matrices easy to compute. For example, when we have a two by two matrix that has a repeated eigenvalue with one defect, we can easily determine the matrix exponential. For this case, let's look at an example. Let's consider a matrix A that has entries five, four, negative one, one. This matrix has an eigenvalue of three with an algebraic multiplicity of two with one defect. Because of this, we can easily determine the matrix exponential. First, a given matrix A is equal to lambda i plus b. What we really want here is matrix B. Notice matrix B is equal to a minus lambda i, which in our case, which in our case means we have matrix A minus three times the two by two identity matrix, which gives us matrix B, which is the two by two matrix with entries two, four, negative one, negative two. What's special about this matrix B is that B squared is equal to the zero matrix, and therefore B to the power of K is equal to zero for all K greater than zero, which means if we apply the matrix exponential definition below for E to the power of B, E to the power of B is equal to I plus B, because all the terms past i plus b are equal to zero because we have b squared, b cubed, and so on, all of which are zero. So from here, if we want to calculate e to the power of ta, this would be equal to e to the power of t times a, where a can be written as three i plus b, which indicates e to the power of ta is equal to e to the power of three ti plus tb. And since the matrices three ti and tb commute, we can write e to the power of three ti plus tb as e to the power of three ti times e to the power of tb, and e to the power of three ti is a diagonal matrix, which gives us the two by two matrix with entries e to the power of three t, zero, zero, and e to the power of three t, and because e to the power of b is equal to i plus b, e to the power of tb is equal to the sum of i and tb. Next, we determine i plus tb, which gives us a two by two matrix shown here with entries one plus two t, four t, negative t, and one minus two t. And then finally we multiply the two matrices, which gives us the two by two matrix with entries, the quantity one plus two t times e to the three t, four t e to the three t, negative t e to the three t, and finally the quantity one minus two t times e to the three t. This is the matrix exponential for matrix A, which means this is a fundamental matrix solution to x prime equals ax, and therefore, if we want the general solution would be x equals e to the power of ta times the constant vector c, which is shown here on the right. Matrices b such that b to the power of k equals zero for some k are called nilpotent. Computation of the matrix exponential for nilpotent matrices is easy by just writing down the first k terms of the Taylor series. Before we go, let's summarize our findings. First, we care about matrix exponentials because it provides another way to solve the system, system of differential equations represented by the equation x prime equals ax, where the general solution is x equals e to the power of ta times the constant vector c. It also allows us to easily determine a particular solution given our initial condition x of zero equals the constant vector b. The particular solution is just x equals e to the power of ta times the constant vector b. And then we also found an easy way to determine matrix exponentials for diagonal matrices. If we're given matrix A where we have ABC along the main diagonal, the matrix exponential e to the power of TA has the entries of e to the power of AT, e to the power of BT, and e to the power of CT along the main diagonal, all their entries remain zero. And then secondly, if we have a two by two matrix that has an eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity of two with defect one, we determine matrix B, where B is equal to A minus lambda I. So for the example below, matrix A has a repeated eigenvalue of five with one defect. 
and matrix B is the matrix 2, 1, negative 4, negative 2, and therefore e to the power of t a is equal to e to the power of t times the sum of 5a and b, which because the two matrices commute, we can write as e to the power of 5 t i times e to the power of t b. e to the power of t b is equal to i plus t b, which I've calculated below, and therefore the matrix exponential is equal to the product of these two two by two matrices, which is shown here on the right. I hope you found this helpful.